In the headlines, farmers and barbers among the region's skilled workers to take advantage of free movement within the context of the CARICOM single market and economy. Dominica to transform agriculture through sustainable soil systems. And fewer than 4,000 farmers confirmed under the national validation exercise. I am Andrea V with the Channel 5 News. Back with the details after this. Get ready to open the best gifts with Flow this Christmas. Sign up for a new broadband or TV service with free installation. Or sign up for a broadband and TV bundle and get 40% off broadband for the first two months. Plus, get a chance to win a 55-inch smart TV, one year or six months of free service. Enjoy big time entertainment and big speeds this Christmas with Flow. Terms and conditions apply. Visit discoverflow.co for more. Rudolph Thomas Enterprise in Portsmouth, your suppliers of building materials and hardware products. Over 20 years experience in the business. Rudolph Thomas has lumber and plywood, galvanized and fence pipe. Check out Rudolph Thomas for ceramic and vinyl floor and wall tiles, nails, nuts and bolts, paint and painting supplies. And check out their line of electrical and hand tools. Go now to Rudolph Thomas on 1240 Bay Street in Portsmouth. <laughs> Imagine, you have Hollywood at your command. Introducing Flow Evil. Red cheese, gold rings, all black, everything creeping through the night. Anywhere you are. Big girls don't scream hard like Halloween, make me feel alive. There's a world of entertainment here, and you run the show. Flow Evil. Thank you for staying with us. First up, Dominica to take a serious stance to implement sustainable soil systems to transform the agriculture industry. This comes as the country observed World Soils Day on Wednesday. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations has recognized the importance of soils and adopted a soils charter. This in turn led to the establishment of the Global Soils Partnership. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Fisheries, Reginald Thomas, commended the Dominica State College for hosting a program of activities to mark World Soils Day. Initiatives like these, I believe, will augur well in the transformation of agriculture from a beloved hobby of many to the science-based discipline, which will provide the basis for building resilient and sustainable agriculture. Ladies and gentlemen, as a point of reference, I would like to refer to the World Soil Charter, which was proposed and adopted in 2013 by the Intergovernmental Technical Panel on Soils, which states the following. The overarching goal for all parties is to ensure that soils are managed sustainably and that the degraded soils are rehabilitated and restored. This is a message to, to us to begin to think about this resource and to put systems in place to ensure that we respect, respond to this message. Thomas says the world soils are under threat by soil erosion and loss of organic matter and Dominica must be proactive in conserving its soils. These threats are real threats to the nature hive, especially post Erica and but most recently and significantly post Hurricane Maria. We should take note that as a country and in adherence to our international obligations, we need to take a serious stand on implementing sustainable soil management systems. This will enable us to meet the requirements for the Sustainable Development Goals 2 and 5, both which make reference to responsible practices which will lead to improved ecosystems, biosecurity conservation, reduction of soil degradation, management of forests, food and nutrition security, and the reduction of hunger of the nations. World Soils Day 2018 was observed under the theme, Be the Solution to Soil Pollution. And the socio-economic importance of one of the region's oldest agricultural crops was the focus on Cardi Day on Wednesday. The Caribbean Agricultural Research and Development Institute, CARDI, was formed when Caribbean government representatives signed on to an agreement in Georgetown, Guyana, back in 1974, establishing the institute. 
CARD is headquartered in Trinidad and Tobago with representation in 13 CARICOM countries and is seen as a center of excellence in the Caribbean for the provision and application of research and development in agriculture. Dorian Etienne is Dominica's CARDI representative. From its establishment, CADI has been the recognized agriculture research and development institute within the CARICOM framework. To commemorate the establishment of the institute, all CADI offices across the region will be celebrating CADI Day on the 5th of December. CADI Day is an important feature of the institute's outreach calendar through which we seek to sensitize and engage our stakeholders. CARDI Day aims to continue the awareness of the organization and the work that is done in the areas of agricultural research and crop development. To this end, the local CARDI branch partnered with the 4-H Club to get the young ones involved in agricultural development. In Dominica, we are partnering with the 4-H program of the Youth Development Division, engaging the club minds from seven 4-H clubs in a dialogue and other activities centered around CARDI and the socio-economic importance of coconuts. We see this engagement as very important in contributing to bringing new life into the coconut industry, which incidentally is one of the region's oldest industries. CARDI Day was observed under the theme CARDI and the Coconuts. The Dominica Public Service Union to meet with the Labour Commissioner next week Wednesday in an effort to resolve matters concerning conditions of work for flow staff. Lito says Wednesday's meeting was in reference to long outstanding issues concerning employees of the retail shop which was outsourced a few years ago with staff being brought back in months later. He says at the time that this department was outsourced, the employees were part of the bargaining unit. When these people were called back, we told management that they had to continue to be part of the bargaining unit and therefore they could not have been issued with individual contracts, conditions, terms and conditions which were different to what existed in the collective bargaining agreement. Later says the staff consequently agreed to forfeit the increase which they would have received as part of the bargaining unit. He says the staff agreed that it would have been implemented in January of 2018. He says a similar situation exists with technical staff who are also issued individual contracts. He says he is opposed to employees being offered individual contracts which do not mention benefits which would be included in the collective bargaining agreement. A meeting will be convened with the Labour Commissioner next week Wednesday in an attempt to find a resolution to this matter. No statement has been made so far by management on this development. In more top stories, agricultural workers and barbers are now among the region's skilled workers who will benefit from free movement within CARICOM. Just one of the outcomes of what is being described as a two days of frank, intense and decisive discussions on the CARICOM Single Market and Economy, CSME. CARICOM Chairman, Prime Minister Andrew Holness of Jamaica says the heads have all recommitted to ensuring the successful implementation of the CSME. Prime Minister Holness says they have fashioned a path forward for advancing the implementation of the CSME in a way that can be measured and all can be held accountable. We had an in-depth look at what member states were required to do to advance the CSME and sought to establish timelines for implementation. We have agreed to expand the categories of skilled workers who are free to move within the CSME space. And this expansion would now include agricultural workers, security guards, beauticians, and barbers. These are positive developments for our people and matters which we have been championing for some time. We consider the implementation plan for Haiti's full participation in the CSME, and we welcome the assistance that that country will receive from the European Development Fund in their efforts to become compliant with the measures to ensure that they can participate in the CSME. We discussed as well the roles of the Caribbean Development Bank and the Caribbean 
the CARICOM Development Fund in supporting the efforts to propel our growth and development. We agreed to have a special session to discuss issues to deal with transportation at our next intersessional meeting. In more developments, representatives of trade unions and the private sector to be included as associate institutions of CARICOM. The decision was reached at the just concluded two-day CARICOM Heads Summit in Trinidad and Tobago. The Prime Ministers of Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica have agreed to amend the revised Treaty of Chagoramas. This is expected to pave the way for the inclusion of labor and the private sector as associate institutions of CARICOM. I think there have been a number of significant decisions that will help us move forward. And essentially, we have agreed to a work plan for myself as lead prime minister of the CSME for the next three years. Um, the most important decisions relate to governance first and foremost, that the private sector body and the representative body for labor should be associate institutions of CARICOM, similar to the Caribbean Development Bank, University of the West Indies, University of Guyana. These are all associate bodies with CARICOM and therefore have the right to sit at the table at CARICOM meetings. We've also agreed that we have detailed discussions with the private sector and labor on key aspects of are productive sectors that need immediate action and energy. And those areas that we concentrate on initially will be renewable energy, agriculture and food security, transport, be it maritime or air transport, and ICT. And we believe that the opportunities for immediate action as well as investment for our citizens and our businesses within the region <coughs> are there and we will work together with the private sector and labor to make that a reality. Kaolan Wireless Charitable Foundation and All Hearts and Hands collaborated on Wednesday, Mission Day 2018. The goal of Cable and Wireless was to assist with construction of the Mon Prosper Primary School. Cable and Wireless Charitable Foundation has donated over half a million dollars towards this project and the Pebush Primary School. Construction on this new school project at Mount Prosper began in mid-August this year and is projected to end in late December. Two new buildings are being built, a primary school and a preschool, both of which were damaged by Hurricane Maria. The facility being built by All Hands and Hearts will be hurricane and earthquake resistant. The new wing will complement the current building which is too small. The volunteers come from all over the world to join all hands and hearts in response to disasters around the globe. Traditionally, Mission Day is centered around the selection of a charity or a cause within the cable and wireless market, which the company would assist on that day. You are watching the Channel 5 News. Stay tuned for more after the break. Stay connected and share your favorite holiday moments with Flow. Get the Alcatel A1 for $199 when you activate an extra-large prepaid combo plan or the Samsung J4 for just $399 with a large postpay plan and get free talk evenings and weekends. Plus, get free WhatsApp on large and extra-large prepaid combo plans and sign up for any new service for a chance to win cash or hampers every week. So make it Flow for everything mobile this Christmas. Terms and conditions apply. Visit discoverflow.co for more. M&J Covering is the producer of designed galvanized and galvalume in Dominica. They design to your specifications, color and length, four styles of galvanized and galvalume pre-painted roofing sheets as requested and supply all your galvalume accessories. M&J Covering helps you control spending and reduce waste. At M&J Covering, they are also equipped to build your roof to precise standards anywhere on island. So come to M&J Covering at One Mile in Portsmouth or call 445-5001-275-5003 today. Imagine. You have Hollywood at your command. Introducing Flow Evil. Red cheese, gold wings, all black, everything creeping through the night. Anywhere you are. Big girls don't scream hard like Halloween, make me feel alive. Your 
There's a world of entertainment here, and you run the show. Flow Evo. Welcome back. Just under 4,000 farmers have been confirmed thus far under the national validation exercise of the Ministry of Agriculture. The exercise, which was launched in August, was geared at gathering information on farmers, their holdings, productivity, and challenges, among other things, and had an initial lifespan of six weeks. However, this project is ongoing with no set end date just yet. Technical officer responsible for agricultural extension, Felix Leslie, explains the need to validate the number of farmers in the country arose after Hurricane Maria. Following the passage of Mary, a number of farmers came in to register their farms, you know. Some farmers have actually received assistance um, from government um, post-Maria, yes. But we are saying now we need to ascertain what's on the ground. And so the validation is undertaken to give a real picture of what's on the ground. The extension officers in the seven agricultural regions um, have been out there working with farmers closely, interviewing farmers. And all, every farmer that is being interviewed will be part of a database. Leslie says Hurricane Maria also provided the opportunity for the ministry to improve on its database of farmers. Yes, we, we, we had some level of data in agriculture. But we think that Maria has given us the opportunity to improve in data and data management. So we want to know from all the agricultural regions how many farmers are involved, what are they doing, when they're doing what, which market that they are connected to. This database will form the national database. So let's say, God forbid, a storm like Maria would hit us again. We would have information readily available and would be able to tell you um, what is there. So, so, you, you, so this database is important. So, so validation essentially is to ascertain what's on the ground. The technical officer says the process of verifying farmers has slowed down since inception and is encouraging farmers to participate in this exercise. To, I need to say that this is not for taxing farmers. Some people are asking the question. This is not for taxing you or asking. You, you've never heard people go on farms and tax farmers. This is not for taxing. That, this information is for planning. And I speak of planning at different levels. In terms of where we are, um, where the validation is, is concerned, the staff has um, done under 4,000. Okay? And what, what we're experiencing, it has slowed down a bit. So I want to take the opportunity to encourage the farmers wherever you are. Please, and I'm, I'm making this appeal to all farmers, whether you find yourself at the subsistence level, semi-commercial level, commercial level, if you are involved in, in farming some way, somehow, I want to encourage you to come on board. Let the extension officers know. Now, sometimes people say, well, we don't see extension officers. Let me take the opportunity to say something. That when we talk about agricultural development, it's a, it's a two-way street. We have seven offices across the agricultural region. And you, you can also go to the offices. To end the news, the headlines again. Farmers and barbers among skilled workers to take advantage of free movement within the context of the CARICOM single market and economy. Dominica to transform its agriculture through sustainable soil systems. And fewer than 4,000 farmers already confirmed under a national validation exercise. Feel free to contact us at news at marping2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Andrea Louis, and to all of our viewers around the world, thank you so much for watching. Join us tomorrow.